Hey everyone, welcome back to Watch and Carry. So in today's video, I'm actually going to be doing a uh, project for a customer. So a uh, nice guy I met on uh, Instagram, uh, sent me a message a few days ago, interested in uh, this mod that I uh, put a photograph up on my page about a week ago. It's actually one of the newer designs that I came up with, and he basically wants the same thing. Uh, we have that negative display in the analog clock, uh, but he would like to change uh, this portion of the display into a blue filter. So because of the uh, shipping delays, which is totally understandable in this environment, I'm actually out of the uh, honey filters at the moment. So the fact that he wanted blue was perfect. So I haven't made a mod with this color uh, combination before, so I thought I'd go ahead and uh, film this. And then hopefully the uh, customer finds some enjoyment too in watching this project uh, get done. So uh, materials we're going to be using, of course, you're going to have that uh, very famous Casio watch. So... This was just uh, delivered today. This is the Casio World Time AE1200. Okay, and you can check the description below for the exact uh, submodel number. Okay, and this is the one that comes with that analog clock, and of course you got that world map over there. And then most notable about this model is the stainless steel bracelet that you get with this. Okay, so a couple of the materials that you're going to be uh, needing for this, uh, at least for me in my last, I think I've done about, maybe 100, 120 mods at this point. So your materials might vary, but this is kind of what I use. Uh, I got a couple pieces of tin foil here, a bowl here. I'll explain why later. Micro Phillips screwdriver, lug removal tool, toothpick or something a little bit pointed helps, plastic tweezers, a bent uh, paper clip that's kind of bent like this with one end being a little bit longer than the other. Okay, some kind of pin. Okay, this just comes off of my Victoria Knox or my Swiss Army knife. A uh, small fine tip uh, Sharpie, a uh, hobby knife or scalpel, pair of scissors, clean microfiber towel, uh, air duster, some goo gone, um, super glue. And then of course our filter that we're gonna be using today is going to be uh, leaf filters. Uh, code for this is 202 half CT blue. Okay, and then finally, we're going to be using some uh, adhesive, zero degree, size A4, linear polarized filter. Okay, so for the first portion of this project, we're going to uh, remove the case back to get access uh, to the internal watch module. So to do that, we will undo the bracelet, take your lug removal tool, Remove the spring bars here at the tips and uh, save them. Oh, and then if you have a soft work mat uh, to uh, do this project on, that also uh, helps with uh, gripping the uh, watch and also just protecting the face. Okay, and then go ahead and just set your parts to the side. We'll deal with the uh, the bracelet in a little bit. Okay, here on the case back, you're going to be having uh, four screws, so let's uh, remove those. Okay, set these guys to the side. Okay, and then inside here you're going to have the internal watch module. You'll also have this O-ring or rubber gasket. We'll set that to the side as well. And let's focus here on the watch module. So we'll go ahead and uh, use our lug removal tool, but we'll use the end that's a little bit more pointed. Go to the six o'clock or 12 position, go ahead and pry up gently. This is the internal watch module. We'll set that guide to the side. We'll go ahead and take a very dull instrument and kind of scoop out gently 
the masking without touching the inside of that glass so we don't scratch it. Go ahead and take your case back and put that back over it so that we prevent dust from entering the case. And then we can go ahead and set this case part uh, to the side for now. Okay, so when it comes to uh, the internal parts, we're gonna be using the masking here in my fingertips for tracing out our blue filter outline. Uh, that's gonna be the easier part, so I'm gonna do that last. And then we're gonna focus on disassembling the internal watch module so that we can start cutting out the display and uh, substituting that with a negative display in the top left corner. Now, uh, before we do that, or actually let me disassemble it first and then I'll explain the, uh, the part to you. So what we'll do is you'll uh, take something uh, pointed here. One, two, three, four, five, and six. Pull these tabs from the inside out. And you'll start to notice that the uh, display will fade as the battery no longer makes contact with the uh, circuit board. Just like that. Okay. And then we'll take that out. Now we'll take this part here. Before we continue any further, I want to focus in here and I want you to pay attention to this spring. So to get the right orientation for my explanation, look for these two tabs and make sure they're pointing towards the bottom. Then you're going to find this empty hole here and then look for the hole just above that. Make a Sharpie mark right here. Okay. And then just to make sure you don't lose it because it's very, very small and easy to lose. You'll go ahead and lift up and pull out this very, very tiny spring. Kind of looks like that. Okay, so we will set that spring to the side. And then now that we have our Sharpie mark in the corner, we know exactly which hole uh, to return that spring to when it comes time to reassembly. This portion of the internal watch module you can set to the side. We're going to focus on this part for now. Now, because this is a soft work area, but because I'm going to be putting the display down, I'm going to take a clean microfiber towel. Okay, we're going to flip this guy over. Take plastic tweezers. Make sure you're not using metal for this. And then just gently lift up from the sides. Work it around. And then you're going to pry up the circuit board like that. Okay. Now when you pry up, you're going to have this white portion. Go ahead and set that to the side. Circuit board, set that to the side as well. Okay. Then you're going to be faced with this portion. Okay. Now when you get to this part, you're going to face the display towards you. Okay. At this point, go ahead and put the uh, analog clock and map in this orientation. Then with your left or your right index finger, you're going to pry up on this spring right here. Okay, so this part you're going to pull in this direction from the bottom. So we're going to lift up like this. Okay, and what that'll do is that'll expose the display. And then you'll go to the back here, lightly tap out this opaque piece of plastic, set that guy to the side. Okay, lightly pull up on the display and then pull out. Great, so now we got our display completely out. Then what's gonna happen is you're gonna find uh, these two foam pieces. They're very small, but very important. So if they haven't come out already, go ahead and just push them out because they have a tendency to fall out on their own and then you might lose them. Okay, so I'm gonna set these to the side. Okay, with that completely out, what I'm gonna go ahead and do is return the display back to this plastic uh, white housing. So what we'll do is, again, look here at that um, this portion. You see how there's one and two tabs and a third tab here. Go to the third, go to the two tabs on the left. Insert the display in this orientation by putting the display underneath the tabs. And then go back over like that. And then you're going to put this bottom portion of the display underneath this third tab. So you'll pry up like this and insert it like that. And then in the end, what should happen is one, two, and three. These three tabs should be on top of the display. So that way the display doesn't fall when you shake it. Okay. Now, before I continue, let me just explain what's going on with this display. Ignore the white frame, just the display itself. Uh, you can simplify the understanding of the display as thinking about it in three layers. So 
if we're focusing on layers on my fingers on the left, we'll turn the display this way. Or I should go like this. If we're thinking about it like this and we turn it this way, the display is made actually out of three layers. Okay, So you're going to have a top layer here, which is what you see here at the very top. You're going to have a middle layer, and then you're going to have a back layer here, which is what you see here behind. Okay, It's almost like a hamburger where you have the patty and two buns. What we're going to be doing for just this top portion is removing just the top layer and then replacing it with that uh, polarized filter, but orienting the filter in a different direction so that way you get the black and white effect. Okay. Now, if we go back to our hamburger analogy, these three layers, the top layer on this display as it sits is actually a polarized filter itself. So essentially what you could do is you could just cut out this portion of the polarized filter, this part, change the orientation as I'll show you later and reinsert it back and then you will actually get that negative display effect. The reason why we're using brand new polarized filter is because the minute you lift this up, you expose the glue that glues these three layers together, okay? And that glue makes it look very cloudy and very dirty, which is why we have to clean it up and put a brand new filter on. Okay, so now hopefully that makes sense what we're doing. Again, we're just removing this top layer off of only this portion of the display. Everything else here, we're leaving all three layers intact. Okay, so now we have to trace um, where to cut this out. Now I have a template uh, that I usually put on my the display uh, that tells me where exactly to, to write and cut, but uh, you probably don't have that pre-made if this is your first time doing this. So what I would recommend doing is after you reinstall the display onto this white frame, put the masking back on top, Take your fine tip Sharpie, and what we want to do is on the glass itself, we want to draw a line that matches this portion here, okay? This portion where my Sharpie is going. Let me use some contrast here. We want to make a line in Sharpie that runs like this, okay? And that part that we draw out in Sharpie is what we're going to cut with our scalpel. And you can see here that where we're going to cut is being blocked by the masking on top of it once the masking gets reinstalled. Okay, so what we'll do is we will put the masking back on, go ahead and apply a little bit of pressure to keep it in place. And then in your mind, start here. In your mind, start right here, draw an invisible line going up, 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 and extend that line up into the white frame and make a Sharpie mark, right? So now that line, that dot would run all the way down here. Okay, then we'll go to the other side. Starting here again, draw an invisible line in your head going up, 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 and then make a mark where it would meet the white frame right there. So again, that line would go all the way down right here, okay? And so basically what we've done now is we've made our two points. We can extend these lines out with our Sharpie. Okay, we've made two points on our frame where to start our cut. Now the difficult part is figuring out how far to extend this line inside and this line inside, right? Because we don't want to make it too far because then our cut line might not be blocked by this portion of the masking. And then you'll see a cut display when the watch is reassembled and it won't look nice. So what we'll do is we'll just kind of eyeball this. This is probably the trickiest part. So go ahead and put your uh, masking back over the display. Make sure it's secure. Take your Sharpie and hover the Sharpie right over where you think those two points should meet. So I'm gonna put it right here, and then keep your right hand, or your left hand if you're left-handed, in place. Gently remove the masking only, and then go ahead and put a mark where you think that line would be. Okay, and then check to make sure that the masking blocks that dot. Okay. If I were you, if you're unsure about doing this process, what you can also do, it just takes longer, is you can flip this over, get a piece of computer paper, post-it note, whatever, and go ahead and cut this shape out with the post-it note, so that way you actually have a template, lay that template back down over the glass, and then you'll just 
trace over the outline of that template with your Sharpie and now you'll have an exact measurement. I would recommend that process versus what I just did if this is your first time doing it because if you make a, dis a mistake and your Sharpie dot is too far inside, the display is already ruined. Me, I've done this enough where I feel comfortable doing it this way. Okay, but you can see here now that we put our masking, it's blocked. So now let's go ahead and connect our lines together. So to do this, uh, I forgot to mention, take a straight edge. Make sure if the straight edge is metal that you are not touching this portion of the display because uh, you don't want it to get scratched. This portion, however, on top is being cut. That's why it's okay for me to mark here because we're cutting this. So let's connect these dots together. It's a little bit sideways, that's okay. And connect these other two dots together. Okay. Okay, so now we've got our outline. You can see here that my lines are not perfectly uh, parallel to this. It's a little bit uh, going on an incline here. That really doesn't matter, you know. Uh, I just want to connect those dots because all that matters is that this part of the masking is blocking it. Okay, so now we'll go ahead and lift this up. Okay, and uh, make sure not to smudge the Sharpie mark, okay, with your fingers, because it might smudge in this direction and then the display won't look uh, clean anymore. We'll go ahead and carefully, again, in this orientation, pry up here again and lift out the display one more time and set this frame now to the side because we're gonna start doing our cutting. Okay, now when it comes to the cutting, uh, be safe, of course, with your blade. Make sure it's sharp. The most dangerous knife, of course, is something that's dull where you're pushing too hard. And what I want you to focus on is really just making gradual cuts, okay? So don't focus on really pushing really hard and getting it done in one cut. Again, remember, we are just removing the top layer. If you're pushing too far down with your hobby knife or your scalpel, you're going to go through all three or you might go through two layers and then you're gonna have a problem. So what you wanna do is put a decent amount of pressure. It's kind of hard for me to explain how much, but very gradual pressure, and then just make a straight cut. Then your next cut, do the same thing, same pressure, same pressure. Once you feel that you've created a tract inside of the display, where it's easy for your blade to track along that track, then you can start putting a little bit more pressure, a little bit more pressure, and a little bit more pressure. Then you'll repeat the same for the other line. Gradual, 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 make a track. Once you get that track, put the blade back in the track, a little more pressure, keep repeating the process, okay? So we'll go ahead and make our cut here. So I'm gonna start here at this tip. And then what you wanna do is, increase the brightness here just a bit, is make that cut towards you. So go nice and slow, hold the display with your finger, and go on that Sharpie line. Repeat. Now when you're cutting towards the free edge, make sure you extend your cut all the way past the free edge. Don't stop before it. If you stop before it, what ends up happening is you don't have a nice breakaway between this part of the display and this part, and it makes this part much harder to separate. Okay, now once you feel like you have a track, go ahead and put it back in the track. Okay, and you can go ahead and go back and forth with this. And you can see that the knife tracks very easily along that cut that you did. Okay, so let's stop right there. Recap your knife. Take a very small amount of tape, if you have it, or anything sticky. Go ahead and put this right over where you just cut. Press it in and then lift up gently. Okay, and what we're trying to do is remove that debris from the tape so that way that debris doesn't start getting pressed into the good part of the display and scratch that portion. Go ahead and set your tape down to the side. We're gonna go ahead and turn this to the other side now.
and uh, cut one more time. So maybe after five passes, you now have a track. Go ahead and start running your blade back and forth inside of that track. Okay, that looks pretty good. Okay, again, take your tape and lift up to get that debris off of there. Let me throw that away. Okay, so now what we've done is we basically created a perforation inside of the um, a perforation inside of this portion of the display, so that way when we start peeling it off, it'll break hopefully along that perforation. Now, as I mentioned, you have glue holding these two layers, top layer and middle layer. So we need to loosen that glue with a chemical. So what you'll do is you'll now go to your uh, Goo Gone. You'll get your bowl here. I'm just using a bowl that's uh, been fitted with some uh, tin foil here. Okay, and put just a small amount of Goo Gone into here. Okay, that looks pretty good. Nothing too much, a little goes a long way. Okay, and then we'll take a uh, Q-tip. Now for me, I like to use these fine-tipped Q-tips. I don't know the exact technical uh, term for these, but you can find these on Amazon. Just uh, go ahead and search fine-tip Q-tip. We'll go ahead and uh, dip this in. And we'll go ahead and saturate here just at the corners where the glue can get, exp um, can get uh, seep into the top layer and the middle layer. And what this will help to do is start to loosen the glue just a bit. So that way we can start breaking apart or peeling that top portion of the display. Okay. So I'm going to let that sit for a couple minutes and then we'll come back in. Okay, so it's been about two to three minutes. We'll go back to our display and then we're now going to use our pin. Okay, so for a pin, you really want to use a fine pin, um, like a clothes pin. You don't want to use like a, uh, a thumbtack or a safety pin. Those are a little bit too thick. And what we're going to do, going back to our analogy, top layer, middle layer, bottom layer, we're going to take this pin at the very corner right here. And we're gonna insert this pin right here between the two layers just to get an edge started, okay? And then once you have that pin in there, you'll move the pin to the side to loosen up the glue between the two layers. And now this will be pre-loosened. You'll set your pin to the side. You'll grab a, a guitar pick, which I forgot to mention if you have one or something soft, even a credit card might work. And then you'll wedge this credit card in and start working away at the top layer, again, just for that portion that I've put in the black shade of the Sharpie there. Okay, so let's take our pin first. Start here with the uh, display like this. Put that pin at the very top between the top layer and the middle layer. You can feel where that is and push the pin inside. Now how you can find the correct layer is you can kind of take your pin here on the display, drag it slowly until you feel it fall off the first edge and land on the second edge. That second edge is going to be here and that's going to be the middle layer. So drag it slow. Okay, I felt it drop and then kind of push the pin down. Make sure you're not doing this in the direction of your fingers. And there you go. That's what you're looking for. 
It's kind of like that. See how the pin kind of went inside? Now we're going to insert the pin maybe a quarter or a fifth of the way in and then start turning the pin to the left and to the right to loosen the glue. If you could get this corner lifted up, that's even better. And that's all you need. Now we can set this pin to the side. Take your guitar pick and gently lift up on that edge. Okay, and what we're going to do is we're going to loosen this from this corner to this corner right here, from here to here. So we'll work the guitar pick left to right, left to right. Okay, and what I want you to do is keep working this pick until you're just maybe one or two millimeters away from the Sharpie line. So don't go all the way to the Sharpie line. Okay, so that's pretty good. Now, once we get pretty close, we're going to focus on just one edge. So I'm going to go to this edge first, take out my pick, reinsert it, and try to break, try to almost separate, almost like a knife, this portion from this portion. It should break cleanly along this line that you scored. So watch here as I go ahead and do that. I'm going to move very slow here, okay? So I'm trying to break it away. Okay, now you can see here that as I'm trying to do that, it's not really catching, right? What you'll start to see is that not only are you lifting up on this portion of the display, you're also starting to lift up on this portion and that's a problem. That's why we're going very slow and not going all the way to the Sharpie line. So that tells me that this score line that we made with our knife is not deep enough. Otherwise it should separate. So we'll go ahead and try the other side, okay? Try to lift up on this port part. Okay, again, you'll notice I'm not getting a clean break between here and here. So let's set the guitar pick down, take our hobby knife again, and really focus just on the edge here and the edge over here. So we'll go back to our track and really put a little bit more pressure Okay, and then this side too. Okay, just a few passes. Again, take a piece of tape, lift up on that uh, debris that you cut off, set that tape to the side. You can save that for later if we need to cut again. And let's try the guitar pick one more time. So we'll focus on this bottom portion here. Okay, there you go. You see how easily that broke off? That's how I know my score line is good enough. So I'm gonna go ahead and now gently pull this all the way to here. And again, I'm gonna stop right before the Sharpie line. Now I'm gonna go back to this edge, lift up here. Perfect, nice and clean break. And then now I can bring this all the way to the Sharpie line. There you go, that was nice and smooth. And look at that, there we go. So this is polarized film in my right hand that I've just removed, the exact same polarized filter that we're gonna be replacing onto this. So why do you get the black effect? Well, let's take a look what happens when I turn this 90 degrees. Okay, so I've turned that piece of polarized film 90 degrees and now look, wow, we get that black effect, almost like what we're looking for. Okay, so why that happens when you turn it 90 degrees, I'm not sure you'll have to do some research on polarized filters, but that's all we're doing is we're cutting this shape out of a new polarized filter, turning it 90 degrees in this direction or in this direction, it doesn't really matter, and then reinserting it back, okay? Now it's important to know that the effect will not be the same if you accidentally flip this over, right? So if I flip this over and I put this down, Let's do this with tweezers so you can see. See, it almost looks purple. And then now we have the normal display. And now it looks purple. But if I put it in the same side that I peeled it off of, this is the normal. And there's that black. Okay, so you need to make sure that when you cut out your new polarized filter, it's on not only the correct orientation, for 90 degrees, but it's also on the correct side, and I'll show you how. 
But you can see here, this is filled with a lot of gunk, a lot of glue. That's why it looks completely cruddy. Okay, which is why we're putting new film on. Now, before we put the new film on, okay, go ahead and save this portion, by the way, set that to the side. We need to clean out all this gunky glue that's right here. Okay, you see all that? That's just gunk, that's just glue. So what we'll do for that is we'll go back to our goo gun and we're gonna do it in the following process. Okay, really saturate your Q-tip, go over the entire display that you just cut out and get it wet. And what will happen is the goo gun will start to emulsify, or not emulsify, it'll start to coagulate the glue, and that makes it easier to remove from the display. So I'm putting a very generous wet coating of Goo Gone on there, okay? Once that's completely saturated, go ahead and leave that for about five minutes and then we'll come back. Okay, so this has been sitting for about five minutes, so we'll go ahead and keep our Goo Gone right there within arm's reach. Take a bunch of Q-tips ready, okay? And what I like to do is I already like to soak my unused Q-tips into the Gugon so they're ready to go. Now what you'll do is you'll take your Q-tip and just start going back and forth. And then dip again, go in the other direction. And what you'll start to notice is these nice silvery clumps start to pop up and that's the uh, that's the glue coagulating. That's the effect of the goo gone. Okay, once you feel like you have a good amount of glue clumps showing, go ahead and uh, take your microfiber towel and just wipe off that excess. Okay, and repeat the process again. So we'll saturate this again and just start rubbing. Now this is probably the longest process or the longest portion of this modification is getting all of this glue off. So be patient and stick with it. You don't want to um, do a haphazard job on this because uh, it doesn't look good and there's a little bit of glue left in there. It will be even more pronounced with the blackout display. You know, anything on black, just like a black car, is a lot more pronounced and a lot more visible. So any imperfections will really start showing up. So you want to get all that glue off. Essentially, this part of the display that was removed should look just as clean as this part of the display. Okay, you got some good clumps there. You can kind of work those clumps out and maybe wipe it off like that and work those things out like that. Okay, so keep at this. Might take five minutes, might take you 20 minutes. Just stick with it again until you get all that glue, uh, all that glue gone. And I'll check back with you guys then. Okay, one thing I did want to point out is as you're pushing down with your fingers, of course, don't be pushing down too hard. You'll start to notice, you know, these weird uh, um, uh, characters or numbers start popping up on the display. And, you know, it kind of looks bad. It almost looks broken at this point. So if you start seeing that, just understand that is completely normal. That's just because you're pushing down on the, on the layers of the display. And for some reason, those parts are popping up. However, when we reassemble the uh, internal watch module, we're going to use our paper clip to reset the watch, almost like what you would do if you do a battery change. And what that does is it kind of wipes out the display, makes it completely clean, almost like an erasing an etch a sketch. And then the normal time, the normal character, or, uh, normal characters will start to appear. So completely normal if you start seeing stuff like this. Okay. Okay. One other way to kind of tell, besides looking at the, the display to make sure that it's completely clear of glue, is as you're rubbing with your Q-tip you'll start to hear a uh, scrubbing sound, which tells you that you're getting to clean, unglued display, which is what you want. So if you kind of listen here, Well, I guess it's not making the sound right now, but sometimes you'll hear a uh, squeaky sound. So that kind of tells you that you're getting to the bottom. All right, guys, I'll keep going with this and we'll check back in a few minutes.
There's that squeaky sound. Okay, we're getting towards the tail end here. Make sure you pay special emphasis to right at the edges here and here. Those tend to um, be the most difficult portions of the display to remove glue from. And every now and then you can kind of lift up the display, turn it to the side in the light and kind of see if there's any more uh, hazy glue that might be in there. Okay, so we are all done. So let's take a look now. Again, ignore these little black ink marks. Those will disappear later. But you can see just how much cleaner that is compared to when I first removed the uh, factory polarized film. Okay, let's go ahead and set this guy down. Uh, go ahead and uh, dry this. Okay, be gentle. Make sure you're using a soft, clean microfiber towel. And then you can kind of wipe off the remainder of the display. Okay, making sure it's not wet at all. We'll set our goo gone to the side, and then I'm gonna go wash my hands because I have a little bit of goo gone juice on there, and I'll be right back. Okay, let's go ahead and uh, put this on a dry portion of the microfiber towel. Okay, now what we're gonna do is uh, try to cut out our polarized filter. Okay, so uh, this right here is the polarized film. And uh, this particular film has an adhesive backing. Uh, the way to think about polarized film, depending on the type you have, but for this one I have, is it's actually made up of three layers. Again, three layers. You actually have the polarized film in the middle. On the top, you have a protective piece of removable plastic. And then on the bottom, same thing, removable plastic. Now, because this is adhesive, one side of the middle portion layer is adhesive. Okay, it's almost like peeling off a sticker. So you have to find out which... Of, the, of these two layers, top or bottom, is actually covering the adhesive end. So an easy way to do that is you kind of go to an inconspicuous corner like the top here and uh, kind of peel away the three layers. And let me zoom in here so you can see. Okay, you see here how I have the polarized film here and then I have a protective piece of plastic on the right here and another one on the left. So you just kind of lightly touch the corner Okay, the right one feels sticky, the left one doesn't. So I know this portion of the film is going to be facing down into the display. It's actually going to attach to this portion right here. Okay, so what I like to do is once I know which side is sticky, in the corner again, I go ahead and just mark here um, non-stick or whatever marking you want to do to let you know which side is which. Okay, now that we've got the sides figured out, we need to know the orientation. So I remember I explained to you earlier that um, it matters not only which side we're doing, this side or this side. So we now figured out it's this side. We need to know which orientation, right? So what you do is you'll put your polarized film over the display, focus just on the analog clock portion that we cut out, and you want to see that portion go completely black. Okay, so if I put the film this way, it doesn't really look different. In fact, it looks just like the factory filter, like here on the right side. But if I turn this to the left, it gets blacker and blacker and blacker and blacker. Keep going. Now it gets lighter again. We want to find the blackest shade. And just by experience, I know that it's this orientation right here. Okay, now you'll notice some little marks here from the display, right? Like right here, you'll notice this mark here and that mark again, that will all be gone once we hard reset the, uh, the watch. So don't be worried about seeing those. Okay, so I'm gonna turn my film this way. Again, the uh, display is down first. This is gonna go over the display, put it right there in the corner. And you can go about uh, tracing your shape one of two ways. You can either start outlining here what you see, or you can take that part of the film that you cut out and just lay that on top. Lay that on top of the display like that. Okay, and then uh, go ahead and just use your Sharpie to kind of make a trace of that shape. So it doesn't really matter which method you do. I find it easier to do it this way, but I've done it both ways, so. Okay, that looks pretty good. Now, if I go ahead and lift up on this, okay, this part at this point you can throw away. 
got our shape. Let's go ahead and use our scissors to cut this out. And because uh, technically your uh, Sharpie mark is a little bit larger than the shape you cut out, go ahead and cut away any of the uh, Sharpie marks. So you shouldn't see any Sharpie left. It should be completely clean. Okay, that looks pretty good to me. Okay, now some of you might lose track of which side we're on again. So if you need to figure that out, go ahead and take your uh, display again, hold it up over, turn it 90 degrees, and if it turns black at 90 degrees, you're good. Let me show you what happens if we're on the wrong side. All right, so that, that's the correct orientation. If I flip this to the other side, it looks purple. If you see purple, Okay, flip it around. If you see any purple while flipping it, you're on the wrong side. You should be seeing black. Okay, and once you find the right side, what you can also do, just so you don't have to keep doing that, is just take a Sharpie. And we put an X here. For me, an X tells me that that is the side that is not going down to touch the display. Okay, so now that we got that, we'll go ahead and uh, go back to our display. Make sure it's clean. You can even take your air can, if you have it, and lightly blast that away. Take your display, take your tweezer, and kind of, uh, before you peel off the layers, figure out which way this is gonna go. So this looks like, Actually, the uh, camera accidentally stopped, so I had to reshoot again. Um, so go ahead and uh, take your filter down. Once you find the right orientation, go ahead and peel off the adhesive part or the uh, plastic that is touching the adhesive part, so it should be on the back. Okay, and set that to the side, and then we'll go ahead and gently grab this and lay this down. Okay, once that's in place, go ahead and take something soft, gently squeeze it, and then you can take your fingers and kind of lightly push here. There is still, so remember that uh, polarized film has the uh, sticky, uh, the middle portion, which is the film. It has the sticky part, the plastic backing on the sticky part, and another protective film. We've peeled away this part and laid this down, and then now what we're going to do is press on top of this to kind of remove any air bubbles. And once you feel that you've got that in place, now we can remove this last protective film portion off and you're just left with the middle layer. So we'll go ahead and uh, take this portion off. Okay. If you see any other air bubbles here, go ahead and put this protective film back on and re-push down on the filter. 
When you remove that film off, you should see a completely black screen without any light colored air bubbles inside. Okay, if you can't get those air bubbles out, reapply the uh, protective film, use a Q-tip, and just kind of buff or uh, push out those air bubbles. You can go inside to outside. Okay, great. Okay, once that's done, you can go ahead and set this display down, take your masking, or actually take your plastic housing. Again, find that big tooth here on the right side, one clip, two clips. Insert the display as we've done before underneath those three clips. Okay, kind of like that. Then take your masking, Reinsert this back over. And now what I want you to do is focus just here at the analog clock. And number one, you should make sure that this analog clock is completely filled with the polarized film. There shouldn't be any exposed uh, light colored. So for example, if that film was too short, you might see like, and I'm gonna move this aside, you might see a sliver like that, which is meaning that you need to re recut a new film. So cover it over. Turn the watch module to the sides and check for any exposed or any uncovered areas. So this looks fully covered, which is good. Next, hold the display, turn it in the light at different angles and check for any existing air bubbles because they will be very, very pronounced on a negative display, okay? So right here, we look really good. I don't see any at the moment, okay? Okay, so now that that looks pretty good, what we'll do is you might have fingerprints on there or smudge marks. So uh, make sure, of course, that that protective film is completely removed from the top. If you haven't done so already, take a really fine uh, microfiber towel that's clean and just lightly uh, buff out uh, the negative display first. Okay, and then focus on the main display. If you notice a lot of dust, you can actually do this first with your air can and then finish off with buffing and then another blast. And then again, rotate it in the light just to make sure you don't have any smudges or fingerprints. So that looks good to me. Okay, so now what I'll do is I'll um, start to reassemble the watch module. So now that we have our display inside of the white case, what we'll go ahead and do is uh, flip this guy over you're going to now take your foam pieces. So let's get those out here, one and two. Okay, you're gonna take the longer one first and you're gonna put that one at the very top. So again, that's the 12 o'clock position, that's the six o'clock. So put the long piece at the 12 o'clock, just like that. Make sure it's all the way pressed down. Okay, so lightly tap it to make sure it's completely down and take the small one and do that one as well. Okay, again, this is our 12, this is our six. You're going to take the opaque piece of plastic that you removed earlier. Okay, now with this opaque piece of plastic, you're gonna hold it up in this orientation and look for the teeth to be pointing forward like this and then find the two biggest teeth so I can see here that I've got pretty flat here on the left and then some big teeth here on the right side, or I'm sorry, find the whitest teeth. So you see how there's a tooth here, a tooth here, a tooth here, and a tooth here. 
You want to look at the wider teeth at the top, then turn it on its side and look which direction the teeth are pointing in. So these teeth are pointing to the right. The, uh, then what you'll do is you'll flip this over so that the teeth are pointing towards you. Okay, put those big teeth at the six o'clock position and then set this opaque piece down like that. Okay, so hopefully that made sense. So the teeth are at the six o'clock position, the big teeth, and they're projecting themselves towards me right now. Then you'll take uh, this foam piece here of the display or of the watch module. You'll notice that there's a cutout here and here, and you'll lay it down in this orientation with the four black foam pieces facing up. Okay, then you're gonna go ahead and take your um, circuit board. Again, 12 o'clock, six o'clock. These two metal contacts should be at the six o'clock position. So we'll insert it like this. Now give it a light, gentle tap. You'll know it's been pushed down far enough when you start to see this white tooth and this white tooth pop up. Okay, go ahead and set that down. And you're gonna go ahead and you're gonna grab this portion of the masking or of the uh, watch module. Put these two tabs at the six o'clock position as well. Grab your spring. Now with the spring, take note of the way it's shaped. You'll notice that it's wider at the top and skinnier at the bottom. I'm gonna grab from the wider end like this, turn it like this, and insert the skinny portion into the hole that we marked with Sharpie from before, just like that. Okay, then take note of these two tabs down here. These two contact points hit these two contact points. So you're gonna take this portion, gently flip it over, and reinsert this down like that. Okay, then you'll go ahead and push this down gently. Listen for some clicks. You'll start to notice the watch pop up. Okay, it might be incomplete, like here we're missing the day because we haven't done a hard reset. So before we do a hard reset, these two clips here in silver, push them down or push it up. This one here, push it up. These two push up and this one push up as well. When you're done pushing those up, go ahead and turn it over. Find this button, this hole here that says AC. Take your paper clip, take the longer end of the paper clip, which is this one, and put that down in the hole. Take the other portion and rest it right here on top of this metal tab, kind of like that. So now you have two points of contact. Push gently, then remove, and then when you flip this guy back over, you'll have the watch module reset. And you'll see now we have the day being displayed and the clock has been set to zero or 12 o'clock. Now take a look at the analog portion here that you just did. And now let's give that one a wipe down again with the uh, microfiber towel or microfiber cloth. and then the main display as well. Okay, once you're happy with that, go ahead and give it a quick blast of air. Okay, and then we'll go ahead and test it again to take a look at our analog clock. And there you go, there's your negative display. So you can see the seconds hand here uh, is moving. The hour hand and the minute hand currently are hiding each other because this is at 12.01. Okay, one thing to notice, if you start noticing that some of the uh, numerals or numbers are not appearing complete, that means that these tabs along the border are not pushed in. So really double check those. There's a click, there's another click, and another one. And now you can see it's back. And then after you click those again, give it another hard reset as we've done before. That looks good. Okay, so this is done at this point. Let's focus now on the uh, colored filters. You guys have done probably the hardest part, so if you've uh, stuck with it so far, good job. Okay, so we'll take our masking here, and we'll go to our filter. So again, this is the blue filter here. 
and we'll flip this masking over. And then we'll put our blue filter right over it like that. And I'm gonna match that up. Okay, then we're gonna take our Sharpie. And what you wanna do is you notice how there's a border here. You can see that thick border all around the perimeter. Try to maintain as much of that border as you can in your Sharpie mark. So I'm going to trace very, very wide. Okay, kind of like that. Okay, set your masking to the side. Take your scissor. Be careful not to smudge that uh, Sharpie into the uh, rest of the filter. If you have any extra, set it to the side and save it for a future project. And that looks pretty good. Now you have corners here, uh, here, here, and here. Make sure you bevel those corners like I did so they don't have any 90 degrees. These two corners are okay. All right, so now we have our blue filter cut out. Go ahead and give that a quick blast of air. Okay, very important, do not clean this filter with alcohol. For some reason, alcohol seems to discolor the uh, colored filter. Just take a microfiber towel and give it a, a preliminary clean for now. We're gonna clean it again. Okay, and then what we'll do is we'll uh, and set this guy to the side. Okay, take our masking and we're going to uh, just test fit this over it just to see how it looks. Okay, and that looks pretty good. So again, we wanna make sure that we have nice big borders here and we wanna make sure that all our cutouts are being overlapped by the filter. And then what I'll do is I'll pull this out the exact way that I laid it down and set this to the side like this. So that way it's easier to grab and apply later. Okay, go ahead and take your uh, tin foil here. Apply a little bit of super glue. Take your uh, pointed uh, Q-tip. What you wanna do is you want to apply glue to the outermost portions of the, uh, fil of the uh, uh, masking. So really, up towards the edges here, 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 and here. You don't want to get too close to these cutouts, okay? So take a little bit of glue. Okay, make sure you don't have any thick globs of glue in there. And then maybe a dot here, a dot here, and a dot over here. Okay, once you have your glue laid in, go ahead and take your uh, tweezers, lift up on your filter, and apply that directly to the masking. There we go, just like that. Okay, go ahead and take uh, like your toothpick 
and uh, gently push down on those glue lines. So that looks pretty good. Okay. And so that's why we want nice thick borders so we have room for the glue to kind of expand without the glue um, spreading into the main display area. Okay, we're going to take a little bit more glue and uh, add a final step here. And we'll just put little rivets, so to speak, of uh, glue. So I'm going to... I'm going to take a dot of glue, put it right here in the corner, halfway between the filter and the masking. And another one here. And one more. Okay, great. And then we're gonna let this glue set for a few minutes and we'll come back. Okay, now that the glue is set, go ahead and take your uh, air can here, give it a quick blast. Not too much force, and then when you flip it around, be even more gentle here. Okay, if you notice any fingerprints, now is the time to get those fingerprints off, but this looks pretty good to me. So we'll set this face down like that. Okay, take your internal watch module. Go ahead and give that also another uh, quick blast of air. Any fingerprints, go ahead and rub those off. We'll set this face up. Take your case, okay. Look for the world time at the top. That'll be your 12 o'clock position, so world time is here. Turn it this way and flip it down this way. So 12 o'clock, six o'clock. Okay, what we'll do is we'll uh, gently lift up on this case back, check very quickly for any dust that might be in there. If there is, go ahead and give it a quick blast of air. Okay, then you're going to take your uh, masking. Okay, without touching the filter, go ahead and lay this down with the circle in the top left portion, like that. And give this a light tap down. Okay, so it looks pretty good. Okay, take your internal watch module, flip this up in this orientation, push it down. Okay, now we're going to go to these little tabs here. Okay, so you're going to apply a little bit of force with your left finger. You see this long clip that runs like this, it's silver. You want to do this end and this end and pry it backwards, pry it backwards while pushing down with your thumb. You'll hear a click. Okay, that's two. Flip it over and do the same thing to the other side. Great, and that allows the pushers on the outside to correctly uh, pushers here to interact with the internal watch module. Okay, go ahead and turn this back over. Again, 12 o'clock, 6 o'clock. Go ahead and take your O-ring. If it looks dry, you can go ahead and lubricate it at this point. I recommend uh, using something like Hops Number no. 9 oil for lubrication. If you're going to lubricate, you put a very thin film between your fingers and run this O-ring through your fingers. This is already a brand new watch and it's oiled from the factory, so I'm not going to do that here. Okay, pay attention here that there's a small projection here in the tooth, of in the O-ring. That's your 12 o'clock. There's a little track that the O-ring will sit into nice and neatly. Okay, take your case back. Look for the word Casio. Make it in this orientation. and then set it down here. Okay. Once it looks like you have your four holes in line with the case back, squeeze it. Take a look at the main watch and to check again for any dust or fingerprints that might be in there before you start screwing down. 
So this one looks completely fine to me. So we'll reapply this protective film back, turn it over. Lastly, check for any pinching of the O-ring between the case back and the main case. There shouldn't be any O-ring exposed. Okay, that looks good. We'll go ahead and push that down again. We're gonna take our four screws from before. Set those down like that. Take your micro Phillips, loosely tighten. Take one more look to make sure there's no O-ring being pinched and then fully tighten. Don't go too hard. Once you feel resistance, give it a quarter turn and you're good. Okay, so that looks good. So that's our modification so far. I love it. This is actually the design of the customer. He's the one that chose this blue filter. So I think he had a really good eye for design here. I think the blue and the black looks great. Let's get our bracelet going. So again, we're gonna take our watch in this orientation. Take our bracelet. Look for the word Casio again. Make sure it's in this orientation. Set that down. Pull it down to the 6 o'clock position. Flip this guy over. Flip this guy over. Take your 18 millimeter spring bar that you removed from before. Insert one end of the spring bar into one hole of the lug first. The other end of that spring bar, you're going to rest on top of the lug. and then you're gonna pry towards you. And then give it a quick jiggle to make sure it's set in place. Repeat the same thing on the other side. Okay, looks good. Now what we can do is uh, we will go ahead and run through our functions really quick just to make sure they all work. Go to the timer. Looks good. Let's test out that backlight. Okay, so it's hard to see this on camera, but I can actually see the uh, hands moving on the uh, analog clock. Okay, so in the dark, your analog clock will look will have the hands look this bright when you push the light. It's just very hard to capture it on camera. Let me see if I can do this one more time. There you go, see the hands? So everything looks good. All right, so that looks like we're done for today. Let's uh, throw this up on the display really quick. Okay, if this protective film has fallen off and uh, you want to keep it on, go ahead. But if it gets dirty, uh, for me, when I ship these, I put a little bit of painter's tape because it doesn't leave residue and I leave it right on this film, on this screen for the uh, customer to remove. But that's your modified Casio AE1200 with blue filter on those triple windows and the negative display for the analog clock. Let's give you guys a, uh, a roll here. Okay. All right, guys. So long video, uh, but hopefully you guys picked up a little bit something here. Um, if you haven't checked out my uh, Instagram, play, uh, Instagram page, I can't speak anymore. I invite you to do so. Uh, so I have two pages. My uh, watches, everyday carry, my one wheel page uh, is watch in carry. So it's at all lowercase W-A-T-C-H underscore 
uh, N underscore carry, and I'll put it in the description below. If you're interested in looking uh, what modifications I have for sale, you can put in that same exact Instagram handle, but also add um, underscore sales, all lowercase to the end of that, at watching carry sales. And you can see a listing of the mods that I'm selling as well as the prices. I've also had a few customers that were nice enough to um, write in with their review of the watches that I've already uh, sent out to them. And you can kind of check out their feedback. Any questions on the mods, of course, please feel free to send me a question. Uh, for me personally, if you're asking me, I, I do this out of fun and, you know, of course, make a very small amount of money. I just do this more out of the fun of uh, sharing the joy of modifying Casios. But I really invite you guys to buy this cheap equipment that I have. Order a uh, Casio watch. A lot of them don't cost more than 15 20 I think at the most 25 bucks, and just play around with it. The worst thing that can happen is you make a mistake and you're out 20 or 25 bucks, which isn't insignificant, but it's not like a $200 watch. The best thing you can do is you can learn from your mistakes, have fun modifying. Once you know how to do it through watching my videos, you can take it apart months from now, change the filter out, make a different negative display, and now you have a completely new watch and there's just a little bit of satisfaction coming from something that you've done yourself. But of course, if you would like me to do it for you, um, go ahead and shoot me a message. I always welcome it. And in advance, uh, thank you for checking out my pages. All right, guys, that'll do it for today's video. As always, have fun and I'll see you guys on the next one.